Let's tell how to find the constant confidence interval using a t value. Now, previously, we talked about a u or a normally distributed, and those values of t distribution, it's the actual constant directly on the sample size we have because these samples are usually done with fewer than 30 data points. So we're going to we read this table to get our actual um, value. So find the area so that um, find the t value. Sorry, let me let me uh, change that. Go find the t value so that the in the right tail is 0 0.10 with 20 degrees of freedom. So we can use a t reference table. This is one that um, very closely looks like what's in your book. However, it is um, slightly different. And you actually will find the one in your book on those thick formula cards in the back. You're looking at table um, 6. And the only thing that's different is this doesn't have the table number on it. So remember, we were going ahead and we were going to find the area in the right tail. So you'll notice that the... Um, so it gives us the right version, so that's okay, 5 degrees of freedom. So we went down to the 25 degrees of freedom and see where that matches or crosses with our um, probability or our decimal, 0 0.10. And you can see these two meet at 1.316. Now something I actually will frequently do is get out a piece of paper or a ruler or something so that when I follow all those numbers over I know I'm not skipping down rows or up rows because um, that can be very very easy to do. Find a t value so that the area in the right tail is 0 0.05 with 30 degrees of freedom. So we look for 30 degrees of freedom in our column. That's very indicative of the sample size. Degrees of freedom is the number of data points in a sample minus 1. And then we want to look over to the 0 0.05. 1.697. the t value so that the area of to the left is 0 0.10. Now you remember this particular formula gives the area to the right. So in order to find the area to the right, I need to take 1 minus the area to the left. And please be careful with your decimal points here. With 18 degrees of freedom. Now one thing we notice about this table is that we don't have that value on there. So we have to go ahead and think about how this table is symmetrical. If I have 0 0.01 on the left and I have 0 0.01 on the right, I can actually use the t value with the 0 0.01 and 18 degrees of freedom, I just have to incorporate the fact that this is going to be on the left hand side or this value is going to be negative. So when I go to point zero 0.01 and I go down to 18 degrees of freedom, 2.552, because I am looking for the left and not the right, this will be a negative value. Find the critical t value that corresponds with 90% confidence, assuming 20 degrees of freedom. So now we're reading the table slightly backwards. Now in order to um, find our probability value, the degrees of freedom is easy, it's given to us, we actually have to take 100 and subtract 90. We're 90% certain, which means we're 10% uncertain. Now, t, t um, confidence intervals, um, giving us this confidence, can go two ways. We can be unsure on the high end or unsure on the low end. So I have to divide this by 2 to give me 5%. This means the probability I'm looking up is really 0 0.05. And I'm looking at the 0 0.05, and I want to find um, the 20 degrees of freedom. So I kind of had to do a little bit of work with this confidence, because I had to first get my level of unconfidence and divide that by 2 to indicate two tails. And then I can go ahead and look. Um, 0 0.05 and 18 degrees of freedom. 
Oh, excuse me, 20 degrees of freedom. I was wondering why the numbers weren't working out. Right there we go, 1.725, and that would be my T value. So that's a look at how to read the T reference tables to get your critical T value we're going to use in creating confidence intervals.